Matthew 6, 6. If you'll listen quick, I'll be done before 6, all right? Matthew 6, 6. We'll be done before 6. I didn't do it. I'm going to read one verse, and I'm just going to make some comments, and we'll be done. Jesus here is with those disciples that are seeing Him work miracles and seeing Him do all these wonderful things that many of us have talked about. Supply needs, meet needs, heal physically, work in people's hearts and lives. And He says to them in verse number 6, right, let's read from verse number 1. He says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men, to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou dost alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in synagogues in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. When thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Lord, I praise you tonight for the blessing that you've been to so many, the testimonies that have been shared. And God, I thank you for our church that, Lord, has been blessed beyond measure. God, I know that if the devil could, he would, he would try to slip in. And Lord, he would try to discourage us and distract us and to cause us to remove the focus off of what it should be. God, I ask for your protection. I ask that your hand be upon this place that your hand would guard the families and the homes that are represented here tonight. That, God, you would bless the marriages and the children and the teenagers and the young adults that sit in this church this evening. God, that you would work as only you can work. And when we are done, God, may we know that you've worked, not man. In Jesus' name, amen. Prayer is important in the life of the believer. Let me say that again. Prayer is important in the life of the believer. Amen. The Bible commands us often about prayer, that we're to pray without ceasing, that we're to pray always for all things, for all men, that we're to give thanks to the Lord, that we're to pray in faith, asking, believing, we're to pray, believing. God commands us often about prayer. And prayer is one of the easiest things to overlook in our Christian life. As a matter of fact, if we're not careful, we begin to do often, as Jesus said in the scripture that we just read, when, when we pray, if you look in verse number 5, he says, When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in synagogues and in corners and streets that men, they be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. The first thing that I want you to see here is that in every one of our life, there should be a place of prayer. There should be a place of prayer. There should be a place that you go to. There should be a place that is designated for you to spend time with the Lord. You know, we have places in our life. We have a home that we'll leave when we come to this place. We leave this place and go to another place. We'll call it our home and we call this place our church. And maybe there's a specific place that you go to buy groceries or a specific place that you go to to purchase gas or specific place that you go to to visit the doctor. And there's a specific place that you go to to handle a financial transaction. There's a, a place that we go to for everything. In many of our lives, there's a place that we have to go to pray. There ought to be a place of prayer in your life. How many of you have ever ridden past the bank and said, you know what, I need to go by the bank? Or you've ridden past the grocery store and thought, man, I need to stop and get that. Or you, you've been past the, the uh, doctor's office and it's reminded you of a doctor's appointment. Well, when you have that place of prayer, it is a constant reminder that we need to pray. 
There's a constant reminder of those children that we have that need our prayer, that husband or that wife that we have that needs our, our prayer, that church that needs our prayer, that, that uh, situation that needs our prayer. When there's a place of prayer, there's a constant reminder that we need to pray. And the Lord said, when you pray, he said, go to that specific place, verse number 6. But when thou prayest, enter in thy closet. And when thou hast shut the door, look what he says secondly here. Pray to thy Father, which is in secret. He says, not only is there a place of prayer, he says, secondly, there's a person of prayer. You say, Pastor Brian, that's right, I'm the person of prayer. I'm the person that needs to pray. While that is true, that is not the person we need to be concerned about. The person that we need to be concerned about is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are things in our life that hinder our prayer life. The Bible said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. In other words, if my life is filled with sin, if I'm living in sin, my prayers aren't heard by God. There are things that hinder our prayer. Not only sin, a lack of faith in our life hinders our prayers. He said, when you, in John, he said, he said, what's everything you ask? Believing. Listen, we need to, if we don't believe that God can hear and answer our prayer, what are we praying for? As a matter of fact, if we don't believe that God can hear and answer our prayer, we're praying for men's sake. We're praying so that men can see us. If we don't believe that God can hear and answer our prayer, then we're praying just to be seen. We become habitual. We become ritualistic. And the person of prayer must be the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, as a matter of fact, a little bit later on, he says in verse number 9, he says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Prayer is, a, is, a, is, is, is our time that we get to talk to the Heavenly Father. God's got all these things going on in the world, all these needs that need to be met, and all these people that are praying, and God says, not one of them go unheard. He says, I know when the sparrow falls to the ground, he says, I've supplied the needs of the entire world. He says, I know what you had need of. He says, he says in Jeremiah, he says, I know the thoughts that I have towards thee. The person of prayer, prayer our prayer life is not about us and, and what we say. And Some people, I, I remember hearing a story one time of a young man who was called on to pray during church. He had never prayed in church before, and the preacher called on him to pray, and instead of praying, he hollered, Skip. How many of you have ever felt that way when somebody asks you to pray? Don't call on me right now, amen? I've had people come to me and they say, Now, Pastor, I know you call on people to pray at the end of service. Please don't ever call on me. Please don't ever call on me. That's a bad thing. Don't do that. Because every time I go to call on somebody to pray, the devil just points me right at you. Just ignore it. Don't, just don't say anything. We often want to make prayer about us, but prayer is about the Lord Jesus. Prayer is about spending time with God and talking with Him and casting our care upon Him and thanking Him and not only thanking Him, but asking Him for the needs of your life. He said, listen to me, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. We have not because we ask not. It is God that supplies all of our needs. But my God, he said, shall supply all your needs. He said there's a place of prayer. That place of prayer is a constant reminder. That person of prayer, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And look what he says here. Verse number 6. He said, when thou prayest into thy closet, when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy Father which seeth, which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret, what does he say? Shall reward thee openly. There's not only the person of prayer, and there's not only the place of prayer, he says there's the promise of prayer. The Father which seeth in secret. Can I say to you, Christian, we have an audience of one. We have an audience of one. And our job, our goal, our responsibility is to please God first. And if we'll please God first, if we'll make sure this relationship is what it should be, then these relationships will be what they should be. But if this relationship isn't what it should be, these relationships can't be what they should be. Right. We've been talking about marriage. We've been talking about homes. We've been talking about children. And so many times in our life, even when our children get older, and I understand that my children are just getting older and I haven't been through that. I understand all that. But I think sometimes we, we want our kids to be exactly what we want them to be. We try to make them what we want them to be. 
And we've never spent time asking God what he wants them to do. As a matter of fact, when we dedicate our children to the Lord, what do we do? We're giving them to God and saying, Lord, they belong to you. And we're saying, Lord, help me as a parent to nurture and train them and to raise them, God, the way that you desire to have them raised and influence them to do the things that you desire for them to do. And yet so often we want to manipulate, we want to work, and we want to try to just mold them without ever asking God what he wants for them. You see, the promise of prayer is this, is that the God that sees in secret shall reward thee openly. Don't get distracted by who else is watching other than God. Don't get focused on what people hear you say. Somebody says, well, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say. When we pray, we talk to God as if we're talking to Him sitting next to us. As a matter of fact, God says, when you don't know what to say, the Spirit speaks. God says, I know what to say for you. I know what you have need of. It's just a matter of us getting to the place and finding that person. Not, not, that, not the person and, and making the focus us, but finding the person and getting our focus on the Lord Jesus. And then seeing Him reveal the promise that God will reward Prayer by nature humbles us. Prayer by nature humbles us. Have you ever had to ask anybody for help? It's an uncomfortable thing sometimes, isn't it? Prayer by nature humbles us because it admits, it confesses to ourselves: the solution is not within me. The answer is not within me. The answer rests alone in God. The answer belongs to him. And God says that God which sees in secret shall reward thee openly. I want to be a praying church. I want to be a praying Christian. I want to be the kind of Christian that doesn't get so full of myself, that doesn't get so ritualistic, that's not so concerned about what everybody hears and what everybody sees. Can I tell you, the Lord convicted me just recently. You know, every time, I believe every time this book is like to do a great work. I believe that every time this book is open, God desires to do a great work. And you know what? Sometimes as a pastor, we can sit down and try to do the very best that we can do to create a circumstance through which God can work. What I mean by that, prepare a sermon. It's got to be, it's got to be, we got to have the best of everything. We got to, we got to have a big gun every time. And sometimes God just says, no, 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 you don't need that. You just open my word. I'll do the work. Some of the greatest messages I've ever heard were messages that men thought were lacking because they were the messages where men got out of the way and God was able to work. Amen. You, know where, you know why we struggle often in our Christian life? Because we don't spend time talking to the one that has the answer for us. I want to be a praying Christian. I want to be a Christian that says, God, in and of myself, I know I don't have the answer. I can't do it. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know how this is going to be met. I don't know how this is going to be solved. I don't know how you're going to work in this person's heart, redeem their life, and change their their circumstances. I don't know, God. But, God, I'm going to ask, believing you do. And the God which seeth in secret. Prayer is is by, by nature is an act of humility. Prayer by nature is an act of faith. We're asking God. We're trusting God. We have a God that can accomplish whatever He desires to accomplish. But He often takes us asking to. We become so self empowered. We become so self sufficient that we don't need God until the time comes that we do. He says, Pray, and God will bless. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us and taking care of us. 